On July 20, 1969, the world woke up to the news of the United States landing on the moon, specifically the three astronauts who embarked on the Apollo 11 mission, Buzz Aldrin, Michael Collins, and Neil Armstrong. This event caused a huge sensation worldwide, and America took the lead in space exploration. After Apollo 11, there were approximately six more human missions to the moon, but strangely, since then, all human trips to the moon have completely ceased. This has raised several questions as to why, despite the scientific advancements we have today, no one has returned to the moon. Welcome to this episode of Curious Queries, where we will answer the question of why despite all this scientific progress, hasn't NASA revisited the moon? Before we begin, please subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive our latest videos. To understand why there have been no human trips to the moon since 1972, we need to first understand why the Americans initially decided to go to the moon in the first place. Was it for scientific research and benefiting humanity, for example? In reality, the answer is no. The main motive behind America's efforts to send humans to the moon was to demonstrate its superiority over the Soviet Union on a global scale. After World War II ended, all parties were exhausted from the war, and the economic situation was dire for most except for two countries, the United States and the Soviet Union. These two nations were constantly vying for dominance and control over the world. Since they had been allies during the war and had treaties and agreements between them, it was not possible for them to engage in military conflict. Hence, the concept of the Cold War emerged, where each country sought to prove its superiority in various fields over the other. One of these fields was the space race. In October 1957, the Soviet Union launched the artificial satellite Sputnik 1, which orbited the Earth for approximately three months. This was the first artificial satellite in human history and a monumental event that demonstrated the Soviets' technological superiority to the world. Just one month after the launch of Sputnik, in November of the same year, they placed a dog named Laika in a spacecraft and sent it into orbit around the Earth. They equipped the spacecraft with sensors to measure Laika's heart rate, blood pressure, and other vital signs. The purpose of this experiment was to understand the effects of space environment on living creatures. Additionally, in 1959, they sent an unmanned spacecraft named Luna 3 to capture images of the far side of the moon. This was because from Earth, we always see only one side of the moon due to a phenomenon called tidal locking. About two years later, specifically in April 1961, the Soviets placed a person inside a spacecraft, pilot Yuri Gagarin, and sent him into space to orbit the Earth for approximately 100 minutes making him the first human to be sent into space in human history. America had some achievements in the space race as well, like launching some satellites and sending a chimpanzee into orbit around the Earth. However, the overall scene clearly showed the overwhelming superiority of the Soviet Union. The Soviet achievements coincided with the beginning of a new presidential term for US President John F. Kennedy. He had taken office just three months earlier and was facing challenges both domestically and internationally. Kennedy had also caused embarrassment to America when he authorized an invasion of Cuba to support the opposition against the communists, which ultimately failed. And that's why Kennedy and the Americans needed something powerful to restore their confidence in themselves and regain people's trust in them. This is what led Kennedy to deliver the famous speech on September 12, 1962, in which he said, We choose to go to the moon. We choose to send a man to the moon and bring him back safely to Earth. He requested the government to fully support NASA with all the funds and equipment needed to achieve this goal before 1970. The Apollo mission was a matter of life or death for Americans and they saw it as the key to regaining their prestige in the world. That's why they were determined to accomplish this, regardless of the cost. 
They were willing to endure tough economic conditions for it to succeed. The Apollo project was literally America's national endeavor. If we take a look at NASA's budget in 1965, we will find that it was 4.3% of the total U.S. federal budget, which is an astonishing figure that made the Apollo mission feasible with a budget equivalent to $266 billion in today's currency. This is, of course, in addition to the political, governmental, and media support. But what does all of this have to do with no one returning to the moon? Firstly, NASA's budget today represents about 0.5% of the total U.S. budget. This means that NASA's budget in the 1960s was nine times larger than its current budget. This budget is not sufficient to carry out safe moon missions. At the same time, the United States had already established its dominance in the space race a long time ago, especially since the fierce competitor, the Soviet Union, was disbanded in 1991. Therefore, there is no compelling reason for the Americans to spend exorbitant amounts of money to return to the moon. Now they spend much less and still achieve significant accomplishments. To put it into perspective, the Apollo mission we talked about cost over $266 billion in today's currency. Meanwhile, the James Webb Space Telescope, launched in 2021, and created a huge buzz worldwide, cost $10 billion. Even the United States did not bear this cost alone, as the project involved partnerships with 14 countries. From a purely economic perspective, sending humans to the moon again may not be the most important endeavor. Here, let's clarify an important point so that people understand that sending humans to the moon is entirely different from sending machines. Since 1972, flights carrying machines to the moon have not stopped, with various countries sending spacecraft and rovers there. For example, in 2007, Japan launched the spacecraft Selene. A year later in 2008, India launched the spacecraft Chandrayaan-1. In 2013, China successfully sent the Chang'e 3 spacecraft, which landed on the moon's surface in 2018, China launched the Chang'e 4 spacecraft. Two years later, in 2020, they launched the Chang'e 5 spacecraft, which was able to collect samples of moon rocks and return them. This means that lunar missions involving machines have not completely ceased. Only the missions involving humans have stopped. Missions involving machines are relatively easier and do not entail as many risks as missions with humans. Human missions require significant funding and extensive efforts to provide safety precautions with the utmost precision, such as maintaining temperature, pressure, protection from radiation, providing oxygen, and ensuring sufficient food and water supplies. The duration of the trip, regardless of its length, complicates human missions significantly. Even something as simple as disposing of astronauts' waste inside the spacecraft is extremely challenging. Moreover, during such missions, there are potential risks such as rocket explosions or spacecraft malfunctions while in space. What should be a political triumph for a nation can quickly turn into a catastrophe and a disgrace. This is in addition to the risk to the lives of the astronauts themselves. In fact, such an incident did occur in 1970 during the Apollo 13 mission. The spacecraft's oxygen tank exploded, causing issues with the electrical power system. The three astronauts aboard were in mortal danger, and as a result, the mission was cancelled after reaching lunar orbit. They managed to return safely to Earth, making a dramatic ocean splashdown, and it was a major event at the time. Lastly, all space agencies today have a different strategic mindset compared to the past. They view the massive spending on individual Apollo missions as inefficient use of resources and technology. In other words, there could have been a more efficient way to utilize the enormous funds spent on the Apollo project. The individuals in charge of the Apollo missions could have developed a complete system that allows for the transportation of humans to space more frequently and sustainably. 
This could have included establishing both ground and space stations with reusable rockets and vehicles that could travel back and forth. However, no one considered this at the time, as the primary goal was to beat the Soviet Union as quickly as possible. Today, space agencies, along with private companies like SpaceX, are working toward developing spacecraft capable of transporting humans to space and returning them repeatedly and sustainably, focusing on long-term goals rather than single missions. By answering today's question about why despite all this scientific progress, hasn't NASA revisited the moon? We have come to the end. As usual, if you have any questions that puzzle you, write them in the comments below the video so that we can answer them. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and share it. And for those watching us for the first time, click on the subscribe button and activate the notification bell to receive our videos as soon as they're released. See you in the next episode. Take care.